Good morning, everybody. I hope you had a great evening. It was really delightful here in Wichita yesterday. Uh, had a cool front come through. Yesterday's high was 82. Imagine that right in the middle of July or close to the middle of July. So the wind was definitely from the north. i got to thank Reg for sharing some of that uh, cooler air from Canada. Always appreciated in July. Not so much in January. Okay, we left yesterday's market wanting to be a buyer at 21 to 17 and it was okay to sell failure to take out 28 to the buck and that's pretty much where we are once again this morning uh, it is auction week today is the 10-year auction if we were going to have a week auction it would be this one so uh, it's always a question mark the pattern this year has been for three up auctions price wise and then selling to start that on Friday or Monday of the following week. So, yesterday we auctioned at 2426. And that's a fairly high price. <clears throat> In fact, it's right here. So, here's the auction price from yesterday. And you can see the market pretty much stopped at that auction price. <clears throat> uh so, uh hopefully um everybody can hear me. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing, testing. Okay. Um, today is the uh, ten-year auction. It will be the dynamic that drives the market. There is no news to speak of today until the FOMC minutes are released, and the FOMC minutes. Uh, everybody will scrutinize, scrutinize those to uh, see what and when the Fed is going to do anything if there are any uh, changes in today's current policy. And my guess is that there will be enough um, commentary in these minutes to satisfy both sides of the market. Listen, the Fed wants interest rates low. Uh, Jeff Dougherty, other people in the room have pointed out that the Fed can't cut interest rates anytime soon. Right now, debt service runs about $250 billion bucks a year. If interest rates go back to where they have been on average, roughly about 5% across the uh, duration, that would take interest or debt service to $800 billion and it just further adds to the Fed's problems. So we may be like Japan. We may just say, screw it. We don't uh, care what's going on, on around us and the rest of the interest rates are at this and they're going to stay at this rate forever. Uh, <clears throat> and you can see what has happened to Japan, stagflation since 19, the early 1990s. So, And even worse now. Uh, so that's probably the economic future we have. And if you want to learn how to prosper as a trader, uh, we'll go back and we'll be studying what happened in Japan over the years. So anyway, I, you know, selling failure to take out 28 to the buck uh, looks reasonable. Then 3 to 7 would be the second one. I have an upward bias. I'm not really too interested in getting short. I'd much rather play from the long side. Buy one is where it was last night. That was a pretty damn good call, wasn't it? Uh, and buy two is at 9 to 13. We'll keep the numbers where they are. I can sell failure to get through 28. Don't get me wrong, but that's not the preferred trade. Um, so that's the way we will play it. Okay, the knob spread further expanded. Uh, if you had taken the knob spread on Monday morning, it was at 10.27. Then it jumped up to uh, basically 11. Um, and right now, uh, as of this morning real early, it was at 11.29. That's a pretty damn good trade over two days, don't you think? Isn't it something that you could put into your bag of tricks? And it's really kind of key to our thinking about the market when we're bullish or bearish. But this knob spread, long the 30, short the 10-year on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, 
is a very very lucrative spread it um, it's there two times a month and what's the dynamic behind it primary dealer support for the market especially on the 310 and 30 year okay uh, we left uh, this market yesterday wanting to sell failure to take out 36 to 28 I think that's still a reasonable trade. I really do like the long side better uh, than the uh, short side because markets don't go straight up. We'll make S2 31 to the buck. Uh, on the buy side, uh, yesterday we had um, 13 to 17. Uh, the low is 13. So uh, we did our work for you. Um, Right now, this may be a little cute. Let's make it 9 to 13 on the idea we might get a little weakness this morning. But be prepared to pay 17s <clears throat> and then 1 to 5. We'll open up a little bit because if we were going to have a weak auction, it would be the 10-year. Uh, and for those of you that can play the overnight market, uh, you know, once again... Our post-market calls uh, really, really do make you money. Okay, gold was up last night. Like we said, we do not like to be short um, on the um, COMEX close in gold nor in crude because of the uh, chances for surprise. The economic news around the globe is wavering. Uh, it's not showing growth on this round of reports. <clears throat> so you can make the case for owning um, securities. I put an article out from, uh, I believe, Scotia or the Royal Bank of Scotland uh, top mate that made the case for being long. Uh, bonds, papers, treasury. Okay, so uh, we had a 25 plus or minus sell and basically a 28 to 30 sell, so a little bit higher. So we'll make uh, 29, 31, sell one. Pretty aggressive, uh, much more comfortable selling 34, 36. Because of that high volume number right there, there's your attractor. Don't see that the news uh, warrants an explosion in gold prices, but the bottom end of uh, the trading range held, and so now they're going to probe the upper end, and so there's a seller above 30, and we'll see. That's what has been. Don't see any change in the news. I'm going to assume the seller is still there. On the uh, buy side, last rotate down stopped at 23. Uh, then at 24, so... Uh, I'm going to, we'll make it 20, 23, buy one. May have to pay 25, so we'll just see when we get in. And then 15 to 17 for buy two where we were yesterday. So that's where we have it on gold. I think in the summer markets it really pays us to be patient, let the market move to us, and then of course when the market does get to us, we'll be sitting there scratching our head, my God, should I buy it or sell it now? Markets come a long way. Maybe it's going to keep on going. And that's where you really separate the uh, really astute traders, those that can put things into context versus the um, novice or new trader. Uh, the new trader has very little capability of putting anything into context and they're absorbed and totally focused on price action price action of the moment I might add and uh, they can't really make the distinction you know is the market breaking out or is it still in a trading range and the way that you have to do that is you have to really say did this news change anything is there any news that's coming out that can change anything that's how it's done. Okay, we like the sell side of crude um, after the market opens. Don't have any problem with that. Um, the crude prices right here tell us that uh, things have stabilized in Iraq and perhaps Libya. 
uh, that more s the supply is at least uh, where it is right now and is l could get better. Um, so if it weren't for what was going on in Iraq, I'm pretty sure we'd be below 100. I think we'll eventually get to 102. So I see a 102 minus market and I see a 105 plus and we're kind of right in the middle. So if this market was to normalize, you can see that we need volume in this 103 area and we need to build up volume right here. So to build up volume from this spot to that spot requires lower prices. So I think that's fair to assume that we can move this thing a little bit lower. So we'll make 275, 103 by 1 and uh, 102.50, 2 and a quarter for buy 2. On the uh, sell side, uh, <clears throat> we're kind of where we were last night, 50 to 75. Then 104, 104 and a quarter. Okay, some of you that are visiting us, uh, you wonder if uh, we do have longer term trades, if you can swing trade our information. Yes, you can. Uh, the uh, knob spread that we recommended and that we recommend every other week. Uh, is an example of a trade that will last a couple, three, four days, depending upon when you enter. Okay, the euro was dead last night. We moved our sell zone up last night to um, 25 to 35. I think that held when I scanned it this morning. Um, I'm memory challenged from time to time cover a lot of stuff. Uh, so we wanted to sell 25s to 35s last night. How did that work out? And as you all know, I prefer the short side of the market on the euro just because of long-term economics. That doesn't mean it can't rally and it doesn't mean when Draghi picks up the mic where he can job bones down the market momentarily, it rallies back up. So anyway, we wanted to sell 25s to 35s, and that pretty much held. We'll leave it that the same. Then we had 50 plus or minus 5 for sell 2, so our ideas worked out really, really well. On the buy side, we had the buck to 90, so let's make it um, 80 to 90 on the idea we can go at least go get stops below the buck and then we'll make it 50 to 60 for buy two. <clears throat> the euro is really tough to trade in the summer. I mean it just it gets less than quiet. Okay on to the mini. I think today is kind of um, an important day. If this market can stay below 65, uh, it can continue to sell. And I, I mean, it, it just, it's just a rare day that we don't wake up um, with articles about why the stock market should be selling, why the bubble's about to burst, and all the usual players are there. But we were pretty confident that we would rally into the close of the second quarter. So if the market can sell, um, this third, early in the third quarter is when it could. Okay, corrections in bull markets are 50 to 70 points. So that gives us a shot at the uh, 1925 uh, area. So what I see right here structurally is that we've got this low at 64 and we've got this spill basically from 66. So 64 to 66 looks like pretty good resistance and I'm willing to take a shot getting short right there. Go a little bit higher, get stops above the overnight session. And then so getting short here is going to be our sell one. Could be wrong, but I think structurally it deserves a shot 
and then our second cell will be 69 to 71. On the buy side, uh, we've got volume at 58. We've got the last rotate down yesterday at 55, 56. So this 55 area, 57 will be buy one, just because it is support. And then we got volume all the way down here from this 48 to 52 area. So I think this 48 to 52 area really, really does offer us our best opportunity to get long today. A lot of support in that area. Uh, a lot of people have come in and, and bought it. So we've got a, a volume node basically in this 67 area, which could hold the market. And we've got volume down here 48 to 52, which has got a pretty good shot of holding the market. So uh, maybe a 65 plus, 55 minus market uh, to get started, and then ultimately maybe a 50 minus market. Uh, 15 points from 62 would take us down to uh, 47. A quiet trading day, uh, say of 7 points, would take us down to 55. So this area down here, 55 to uh, maybe as low as 47, we should see support. And that's where we ought to plan on getting long. And then as long as we stay below this uh, 65 area, I think the market is a sell. No news to drive today's trading. The news overnight was really, really, really uh, weak, uh, bad. Uh, so um, just not a whole hell of a lot going on fundamentally. Uh, today's FOMC minutes will be poured over by the stock market players uh, to see if anything has happened or has changed. Uh, the biggest change has been by Goldman moving their increased interest rates from 2016 to the third quarter of 2015, all subject to change, of course. So no news to drive today's trading. Will the uh, dynamics of selling over the last couple of days rule? Probably so early in the session. Uh, the longer we don't break the market, the uh, more pressure there is on the shorts. Okay, it'll take at least 15 minutes to get stuff out and around the horn. I'm going to get busy on that right now. Uh, in the meantime, good trading. Be back with you as soon as I can.